Bonjour et bienvenue à France. A beautiful country known throughout the world. Now, I will certainly be spending some time in the tourist trap that is Paris, but I'm starting my journey in France, in Normandy, the region best known for producing a uh, dynastic succession of British kings, starting from the Normans, later the Plantagenets. So, our first site is ahead of us, Chateau Gaillard, built in the late 1100s by Richard the Lionheart, who I'm sure you know from Robin Hood, if nothing else. Now, Richard the Lionheart had a really interesting task as King of England because he was also still a duke within France, and a large part or a large portion of his nobility were also people with land holdings in France. So, as King of England, but also as Duke of Normandy, he had responsibility to protect his lord's interests here. So, to do that, he built this castle, which would have been the crown jewel of his entire kingdom, Chateau Gaillard. Um, overlooks the river, so it could provide defense for trade. Um, but unfortunately, it was very expensive, and he actually never even saw it completed. He died laying siege to a different French castle later. But it still stands as a testament to the Plantagenet power in France. As I discussed in the London video, which if you haven't seen, check it out. The Normans were impressive castle builders. That was one of the big imports or whatever innovations that they brought with them to England. So particularly the multi-tiered castle, which allowed for even better defense than the typically low-walled cities that were predominant in England at the time. So, consistent with the multi-tiered approach, you have what was surely the keep, which looks like on some days you could access, today it's closed, and then sort of outer lattice work from which you could fire arrows. The keep's actually quite well preserved, so it's, it's a shame that it's not open to the public at this moment, I believe due to COVID restrictions. The gates of the castle are doing exactly what they were intended to, keeping us out. From this vantage point, you can see why this castle was so excellently placed, why it was built here. You can completely command the river and shell would-be attackers from above. In spite of the mighty fortifications, the castle was overrun by the French a mere five years after Richard's death. 1204 by Philippe Augustus, the King of France. And once Normandy was uh, incorporated into France, this castle lost a lot of its strategic importance because no longer were the Normans defending themselves against the French monarchy. So what is Richard the Lionheart's legacy as a ruler of Normandy and of England? Well, in many ways, he's kind of the JFK of the Plantagenets. He was very charismatic, he seemed to be a good wartime leader, but he died before he could really make an impact as a civil governor. So, it's hard to say whether he would have been a good king or not. We now find ourselves in the city of Rouen. And that may not be the exact way to pronounce it, but it's the Americanized way, so sticking with it. The most famous building in Rouen is Notre Dame de Rouen. Yes, the French came up with one name for churches and they've stuck with it. There's Notre Dame de Strasbourg, which I've been very vocal uh, about what an excellent church that is. And then of course the famous Notre Dame in Paris. And then this one here, which actually is quite reminiscent of Notre Dame de Strasbourg in terms of the incredibly ornate exterior. Now, it appears that part of the church over here was rebuilt at a later date since the stone does not match the rest of the building. Still, this is really a pretty cool one. I've always liked the way the French do this with the very dainty looking uh, stone carvings. Now hopefully, I'll be able to film inside. I'll be able to give you guys a look at that as well. But uh, now, enjoy this awesome exterior.
Start holding everything up. Just carefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so based on how extravagant the outside was, I was uh, surprised by how plain the interior was. Uh, I thought it was fairly sparsely decorated, considering the magnificent facade. Still, if you're in Rouen, certainly merit to visit more if you're driving out to Normandy the way we are. I also like that the tourism building appears to be built in a similar gothic style. What a fun way to repurpose an old building as a new tourism office. They're doing construction on the outside of the building as well though it's not visible from the front it's more in the central spire it just comes down into that nave area. One of the more peculiar looking buildings I've seen in all my travels is right here in the historical center of Rouen. Almost looks like a giant hobbit house. Not a hobbit hole, mind you. I know the difference. And then the more classic square. All right, we are in Han Floor. Welcome to my crib at Hotel du Dauphine. Got a big day. I see him Omaha Beach tomorrow, so we gotta eat up, rest up, all that stuff. Ow. I do some editing. Ah, living the dream. So it is morning in Han Floor, and little did I realize last night that I was sleeping right there only about 30 meters from the largest fully timber church in France. It's amazing. I, I, we were about to leave and I thought, nope. I gotta get at least a little peek at this guy. Get the facade on camera. It's really beautiful. And unlike anything I've seen. Really, this whole downtown area is just fantastic. Uh, if you're doing a little road trip through Normandy, I certainly recommend this as a stop off. And after a short hour and a half drive, we have arrived at the beach. Now, though it may not look like much today, this was the site of the uh, wartime effort that ended with the end of the European theater of World War II. It was on this beach that the combined Allied forces landed, facing heavy machine gun fire, to start the reconquest of France for the French people. Today there are a few monuments to that effort, including one here for the 1st U.S. Infantry. And a quote that reads, no mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great, duty first. The effort to take the beach was a bloody one. But eventually, they succeeded. And of course the invasion took place on June 6th. 1944, which means it's probably a bit warmer than it is today. Though I suppose that could cut either way in terms of whether it would make it more or less pleasant. I mean, pleasant was obviously never a word used in war. 
Now, an interesting little tidbit is that D-Day is just a way that, that a day of, that's yet to be determined is referred to in uh, most military jargon. So it'd be a D-Day, H-Hour, M-Minute, so on and so forth. Well, walked up and down the beach and it is a pretty uh, surreal experience just to think that not that long ago, people my age were charging up this beach under heavy machine gun fire, trying to retake a country to which they didn't belong. All in the name of the greater good, um, which I mean, especially considering current events is a pretty sobering thought. So um, certainly worth checking out. I think we're going to try to see the uh, American Cemetery and uh, the Normandy Museum. I've got water in my shoes. Uh, but yeah, so that's the, the plan for today. We are now in the American Army Cemetery. It's the resting ground of thousands of U.S. troops, airmen, seamen, Pretty uh, incredible reminder of the human sacrifice that went into liberating Europe. In the center of the cemetery is a mausoleum. See at the top, joy, freedom, and inherit peace. Enjoy freedom and inherent peace, it says.